Hi everybody. So today's story is called How to Take Your Grandmother to the Museum. And it was written by Lois Wise and Molly Rose Goldman and it was illustrated by Marie Louise Gay. And so I'm really interested to learn how you take your grandmother to the museum. So let's find out. I've known my grandmother all my life and she's taken me to lots of interesting places. We went to an art gallery to look at paintings and to a theater to see a play. We went to a planetarium to see stars I'd never seen before. My grandmother and I have never been to an interesting place that she hadn't been to before. Then one day, our class went to visit the Museum of Natural History. It was a great trip and I told my grandma all about it. My favorite dinosaur is Tyrannosaurus Rex, I said. What's your favorite, Grandma? Grandma thought a moment. I don't remember ever seeing a dinosaur up close, she said. I guess that's because I've never been to the Museum of Natural History. Never, Grandma? I was more than surprised. I was shocked, but I didn't say so. That night, Lying in bed, counting the glow-in-the-dark dinosaur stickers on my ceiling, I had an idea. Early the next morning, I called my grandmother. Grandma, I said, this is me. I want to take you to an interesting place. You do? She sounded as surprised as when my aunt had twins. I want to take you to the Museum of Natural History. Why, thank you, said Grandma. That will be a real treat. We'll be doing a lot of walking, I told her. So remember to wear comfortable shoes and make sure you go to the bathroom before you leave home. They do have bathrooms there, but a grandmother could get lost looking for one. Saturday morning, as we climbed the steps of the museum, I saw that Grandma had taken my advice about the shoes. So I gave her a little more advice. Stay close to me at all times, I told her, and do not wander off by yourself. I won't, she promised. Now where do we begin? With the dinosaurs, I told her. I had a feeling Grandma would like dinosaurs, maybe because they are even older than she is. Inside the dinosaur hall, Grandma looked around and shrugged. These are just a lot of old bones, she said. No, Grandma, these are bone fossils, and they're all that's left of the dinosaurs that lived millions and millions of years ago. Paleontologists found the fossils in the ground and in the rocks. They dug them up and figured out how to form these skeletons. It's a hard job, like putting together a gigantic jigsaw puzzle. How do you know so much, Grandma asked. I learned some things from books, like that dinosaur dictionary you gave me for my sixth birthday. I learned some things at school and some right here at the museum. Come on, Grandma, I'll show you. We saw Anatotitan, whose mouth was shaped like a duck's bill. Grandma put on her glasses and together we read about Stegosaurus. I showed her the bony plates running down its back. They look just like little sails on a ship. Then I pointed to the ceiling where the fossils of two pterosaurs hung. Pterosaurs are flying reptiles, I told Grandma. Tupaxara had a wingspan of eight feet, but Pteranodon was even bigger. It had a wingspan of 23 feet. Unbelievable, said Grandma. Imagine one of them stopping at my bird feeder. Together we walked under the long, long tail of Apatosaurus, one of my favorite plant eaters of all time. Finally, we saw Tyrannosaurus rex towering over us. Grandma and I looked up at its five foot long head and its gigantic open mouth. Together we counted its 60 razor sharp teeth. Those teeth look like giant steak knives, Grandma said. We read how T-Rex walked on its toes the same way a bird does. Did you know that, Grandma asked? 
I admitted that I did. I guess you're doing what you always tell me to do, Grandma. Learn one new thing every day. One thing, Grandma left. I think I've already learned at least 10 new things, but I'm all set to learn more. What's next? We're going on a little trip. Grandma's eyes got very wide. Where, she asked. To Africa, I said, follow me. We took a shortcut through Asia and turned left at Central America. Soon we were surrounded by antelopes and monkeys and cheetahs. Grandma was so amazed, she wasn't sure where to look first. It's a good thing I was there to be her guide. This feels like a safari, she said. They're all real animals, not paintings, I explained. These kind of exhibits are called dioramas. The antelopes are looking at us, Grandma whispered. And I can almost hear the gorilla thumping its chest, I said. Grandma stopped to see the ostriches. I once had a hat with an ostrich plume, she said. Grandma, did you kill a bird for one of its feathers? I didn't, but somebody did. We don't do that anymore. I breathed a sigh of relief. Good, I said. We have to save our wildlife. As we were leaving Africa, Grandma asked, where next? Oh, that Grandma. There's no stopping her once she gets going. How about an Arctic expedition, I suggested. I'll have to get ready for that, Grandma said. Just then, I remembered that a Grandma can get tired on a long trip, so I found a nice bench for her to sit on. You can rest as long as you want. Rest? Who needs a rest, she said. I'm just stopping to get my thermal-lined hiking boots. Grandma reached into her bag and pretended to pull out two pairs of hiking boots. I brought a pair for you, too, she said. Sit down next to me and we'll put them on together. We laced up our boots and then hand in hand we began to trek across the icy landscape. Up ahead was a snow-covered mountain. On our way to the top, we saw a family of mountain goats and two huge Alaskan brown bears. You were right about dioramas making you feel as if you're really making the trip, Grandma said. Why, this seems so real that I even feel the change in altitude. You know, the air gets thinner the higher up you go. Then maybe it's time to go down, I said. Way down. To the bottom of the ocean. I never knew there were so many places to travel inside one museum, Grandma said as she caught her breath. This is the Hall of Ocean Life, I explained. Some life, Grandma said, because the first thing we saw were the gigantic jaws of Karcharodon Megalodon, a shark that lived 12 million years ago. Some size, I said, because this shark was so big it could have swallowed a whole horse in one gulp. Here's another giant, I said. It's a clam. Grandma touched the outside of the shell. It's much rougher than I thought it would be, and it's as hard as a rock, she said. How would you like to see some real rocks, I asked. There are rocks in this museum? Not only rocks, but gems and minerals, too. Come on, Grandma. Grandma knows that I have a rock collection at home. Of course, it's not as big as the museum's. Mine fits inside a shoebox. I explained that the first rock we looked at wasn't really a rock at all. It's a meteorite, I told Grandma. Meteorites come from outer space. How did it get here, Grandma asked. A long time ago, it fell to Earth and landed in Greenland, I said. Some explorers brought it by ship all the way to the museum. Then I took Grandma to see the geodes, which are stones with scooped out holes lined with crystals. I love the purple one, Grandma said. That's an amethyst geode, I told her. Personally, I can never decide if my favorite mineral is malachite, which is green and bubbly looking, or rhodochrosite, which looks like a tiny red porcupine. I also like pale blue datalite and rose-colored quartz. It's hard to pick a favorite. I could have spent a week there, but it was time to show Grandma something different. I thought you might like to see a few bugs. Whatever made you think that, Grandma asked. Because bugs are great, I said. 
And we need them on earth just as much as we need ostriches and elephants. Everything helps to balance life in some way. Grandma bent down and kissed me. What's that for? I'm balancing life in my own way, she said. Now show me your best bug. Here it is, Grandma. It's called a Goliath beetle. It's four inches long, and its wings are bigger than those of a sparrow. I'd certainly be surprised to find one of those in my window box, Grandma said. I told her that would never happen. Goliath beetles live only in Africa. How do you feel about frogs, Grandma? I think I like them. Why? Because frogs are fantastic. We studied them in school to learn about life cycles. We did the same thing when I was in school, Grandma said. Some things never change. You're wrong, Grandma. Tadpoles change. Hop on over and have a look. Grandma, I think that we should look at the human biology exhibit next. Our teacher told us that when we look at the animal world, we shouldn't forget about the mammals we know best, ourselves. I like that idea. Our circulatory system looks kind of like a big map with highways and roads and rivers, I told her. And I guess good health is all about keeping the roadways clear and not littering, she added. I think Grandma was trying to tell me not to eat junk food, but I already knew I shouldn't do that. I decided it was time to do something really different, so I asked Grandma if she wanted to do some time traveling. Of course, she answered. Then bundle up and hold my hand, I said. We're off to the Ice Age. The first thing we saw were the fossils of a mammoth. Each of its huge curving tusks was 16 feet long. We looked at a wall that showed a painting of what the world might have looked like when herds of woolly mammoths and reindeer roamed. Just looking at it makes me shiver, Grandma said. Grandma bent down and gave me a hug. Thank you for a wonderful trip, she said. Now it's my turn to take you someplace, and the place I'm going to take you is the museum shop. You are? This trip with you was like a cake. Delicious and sweet. You made the cake, but it takes a grandma to add the icing. Sometimes my grandma talks in riddles, but that's okay. She bought me a terrific snowflake obsidian for my rock collection. I plan to put it in a very special place in my shoebox. The end. All right, so that is the story of How to Take Your Grandmother to the Museum. It was written by Lois Wise and Molly Rose Goldman and illustrated by Marie Louise Gay. And I'll see you next time with another story.